Slightly different setup, slightly higher lights, quite close. I've got the whole room floodlit now, uh, and the camera angles are slightly higher. I just thought you'd see less of my legs and my belly, but we'll see. Um, this is part two of Bancroft's Wine Case, Joe Wadsack's Doomsday Box. Okay, so if you like the three wines you see today, and they're very fancy wines, and watch Tuesday's show, which were the white wines in this case, Joe's Doomsday Case, um, we will deliver to you a bottle of each of those wines for £120, and that covers delivery and everything, uh, which is a good chunk of change cheaper than the wines were, um, about 20 quid saving. So, um, you know, if you want to, please do. So now we're on to talking about the red wines. Oh, this, this is a... <laughs> I just want to just not tell you about them, to be honest. <laughs> but um, here we've got Sepa Gavilan, which is from a producer, a very well-known producer, in the other superb red wine region of Spain. Every country seems to have two really, really special red wine regions. You've got Bordeaux and Burgundy, and there's always Rhone, obviously. Or you've got Piemonte and Tuscany, and there's always Verona with their Amarones. And then you've got um, Spain, where you've got Rioja, Ob, Ribera del Duero, and also Priorat, probably up near Barcelona. And those are the three that I pick anyway. So we've got a wine which is made from a great variety called Tinto Fino. Tinto Fino is a brother and a clone or an evolution or a mutation, if you will, of Tempranillo. Now, see, Tempranillo is grown all over Spain in different sort of homologate, different shapes and sizes it's always like um they're all kind of like a Vauxhall Astra but one's designed for rallying one's designed for a family and one's extremely fuel efficient or something and um you've got Sensabel from La Mancha in the center of Spain which is also a clone of Temper and Tempranillo you've got Tempranillo in uh, Rioja it's the famous variety that makes Rioja and there's even a Tempranillo Blanco who knew that there's a white mutation um but the Tempranillo mutation which is grown here in Ribera del Duero which is like if Spain's a clock, you're at nine o'clock and you're virtually on the Portuguese border and the river, the Duero River, because the wine's called Ribera del Duero, turns into the Duro the moment it hits um, Portugal, where it goes through a region called Trajos Monch and then goes into the Duro Valley and makes ports. So there are wine regions all the way along this river, all the way almost up till uh, Madrid in the centre of Spain. So extraordinary um, river for wines and some of the best wines in the world come from it. So this wine's very dark in colour. You can see how dark that is? Maybe. Um, that smells good. This is called a Criantha. Spain has different phrases for different kind of ageing of wine, and it varies very slightly from region to region. But Rioja, for example, if Rioja is called Joven, it means new. If it's called Criantha, it means it's kind of growing up. It's like it's evolving. Okay, so that's a wine that's been aged in wine for, in, in oak for up to about 12 months, up to 12 months. After that, it's allowed to be called Reserva wine, which is a wine which has been kept back. So it's spent a whole year in oak and then in Rioja and in um, various other terms will be held back a further one or two years, depending on the region, uh, before you're allowed to sell it. And then you've got Gran Reserva, the Great Reserve, which, which is kept back for anything up to seven or eight years in some top cases. So this wine is a Crianza. A Criantha. Um, it's been aged in Barricas in, in new American and French oak for 12 months. And then it's been kept back for a bit longer. And 2016 was a banger of a vintage in Spain. I love the red wines in 2016. That is the case also for some of the wines in the Douro Valley itself in Portugal too. Um, what have we got here? Wow. Smells of... There is the oak because it spent quite a lot of time in wood. But it smells just a hint of dusty vanilla. But there's this intense smell of like cherry and cherry licorice. There's almost a menthol minty component, like because it's so concentrated. It has this aromatic. Okay, it's got fantastic balance, but it's very tense, very coiled. It's ready to pick a fight. That wine should go into a decanter an hour before you serve it. And you should serve that with a perfect leg of lamb. Nothing in the world is better than Ribera del Duero, or Rioja, let's say, premium Tempranillo, and a crispy leg of lamb with maybe some Mornay cabbage, uh, cauliflower or something like that, and some beautiful salty jus and some roast potatoes. And that, oh, I'm going to make myself very hungry. But this wine, I think it's a £16 touch, I think. Very, very nice wine. Um, and that wine will age effortlessly 
for seven to ten years, I think, because of the vintage it's in. Even in lesser vintages, I think this wine's good for five years and it gets better the longer you leave it. Just like Rioja. Rioja sort of starts off almost like a suitcase full of parts, like a load of Lego. And it's like, no, oh, it's not quite ready yet. It's kind of a bit gawky. And then you come to it and it's, suddenly it's gone through this chrysalis metamorphosis and comes out and goes, da-da! And it's fantastic. And it's like that perfect Lego car that you always wanted to build. Now... The second wine here, remember these wines were tasted blind and picked blind, is from uh, an amazing winemaker, genius winemaker, and a very unusual, very beautiful place. This is Cedarburg. Cedarburg Cabernet Sauvignon, baby, baby, made by the Nivut family, by David Nivut. David makes some of the finest wine in South Africa, there's no mistake about that. He makes one of the finest Chenin Blancs in the world. He also makes white wine right down, right down at the bottom. I think it's called Alvaya, Alvaya, I can't remember. But right at the bottom of South Africa, beyond Cape Town, further, further, further. And it's a place called Elim, where he makes Puy Fume quality and Sancerre quality, super premium Sauvignon Blancs. So he's got vineyards down there. Or alternatively, you can get in a car and drive north out of Cape Town through Malmesbury, through Pau, which is a very, very large region. In fact, the region is about the size of Portugal. <laughs> but if you keep on dri driving through Pau, you get to a region called Citrusdal, which is a long, long way. Pau, Tulbach, Citrusdal. You turn off a track to go back up the mountain, and you're on a dirt track for an hour and a half before you get to his estate. And when you come to the vineyards, it's like moon rock. It's these weird wind-worn uh, worn sort of rocks bright red when the sun comes down it's all pinks and blues it's like some kind of trippy sort of like ravers album cover and uh the wines there are just fantastic there's also a lot of wild animal animals up there because you're not in like friendly south africa anymore you're now in the wilds and there's leopards and there's wolves and god knows what um he has a gun in his house, which he keeps just in case wolves come. Um, and while I was waiting to go to the loo in his house, I did pick the gun up and shoot a hole in his wall. Famous story in the wine trade. But no one was hurt. I have very, very, very good gun safety, XRF. Anyway, so, it's true. Uh, this is a, a wine which I suppose in many ways shows why I'm so excited about South Africa. Cabernet Sauvignon is in some people's minds, the king of all wine. It tends to fall into three camps. You either think Syrah slash Shiraz is, or you think Cabernet is, or you think Pinot Noir is. Well, I'm a bit feckless. I sit on a fence and I'd like to have all three, please. But Cabernet Sauvignon in South Africa is such a fantastic match. It's remarkably hot down there. Citrus Dial is actually approaching Oh, is it a thousand meters? It's very high up, but it's not that far from the sea. So you've got the, 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 the maritime climate of, of this massive Atlantic Ocean moderating the heat, but also you have beautiful, bright sun, sunshine days and cool nights. Very cold. I had to wear two jumpers when I was there. That's a drink. Oh, that's a drink. It has the smell of dried thyme and gouda capsule, which is the, the, a, a phrase in French in Bordeaux for pencil shavings. Gouda capsule means the smell of the capsule on the outside. When they used to be made from lead, they had a smell, which smells like dusty. But that smells Bordelais. It smells like it's from Bordeaux. But then there's this huge charge, this tsunami of fruit behind it. Two thousand and seventeen, good for certainly two thousand and twenty-five. I would say, incredibly accessible, beautiful silky fruit. Reminds me of Yarra Cabernet in Australia. So if you like those beautiful pure Cabernets from the cooler regions like Kunawara, you'll absolutely love South African Cabernets. And this one from Citrus Dial is uniquely pure in its outset. Fantastic. Finally, Chateau Montalina. Um, I think I mentioned this in, in the show on Tuesday, but uh, Paul Rankin, a, a friend of mine who's one of the great chefs in this country, had uh, Michelin star in Belfast for 10 years. He's now got a pub up in Skye. Shout out to Paul and Charlie, his his lovely missus. And uh, this is actually from a town um, in Napa Valley in California called Calistoga, where he was, a, I think he was a waiter and he met his wife there who was a chef and then they came to the UK. Um but uh, this is a wine that's been made since, well, this vineyard has been going since the 1880s. This is from the otherworldly Californian vintage of 2014. I think I mentioned a, in the Californian tasting I did in my first week that 14 was a brilliant vintage. And there are wineries like this that have been around for a very long time that have established have very old vines that are extraordinarily good sites for growing wines. 
But um, the Cabernet Sauvignons are very expensive. 130, 140, I think it's 140 pounds for a Cabernet from Montalina. Um, Paul Draper, who's famous for Zinfandel, and this is a Zinfandel, um, his Zins cost of 50 pounds, but his Cabernet is 140, Montebello. Well, you could argue that's the best wine in the whole of California. It's certainly one of them. Um, but this is Chateau Montalina. It's one of the oldest wineries. It, it was opened sort of 60 years after the Franciscan monks came and kind of colonised and uh, sort of jesus up California. And uh, they had to then shut for the prohibition and they weren't allowed to open until 1933, where they still had old vines. And Zinfandel, an Italian variety, thrives in this um, region, this area. Now, most Zinfandel is 15, 16% alcohol. It's big and jammy. They've managed to rein this back to 14 and a half, which means picking at a very careful time. This wine smells straight away more elegant, more Italian, actually. It smells elegantly Italian. Uh, it smells like Primitivo from the south of Italy. Oh. If you feel... I feel ashamed that I've opened that because that needed another five years to become really special. This is a £40 wine. Such finesse. Perfect. Christmas. Maybe some venison if you like If you like your game. Haunch of venison. Also absolutely delicious with the Christmas ham. You know the one that used to get on Tom and Jerry? The big ham with the white bone in it. Tom and Jerry ham. Calistoga Zinfandel. That's the full case complete. So if you want to buy it, like I said, click down our email. Um... Orders at bancroftwine.com and give us some questions for tomorrow. I look forward to seeing you. Uh, I'm going to carry on drinking these, that's okay. <laughs> They're quite nice. <laughs>